Alright, hello everybody. Today we're going to learn about simultaneous equations using the elimination method. Now previously in SEC 1, right, we have actually learned how to solve basic linear equations where there's only one unknown in the question. Okay, but if you observe this question now, there are two equations in the question. And uh, how many unknowns do we have in this question? Okay, we have x as an unknown. We have y as an unknown. There are a total of two unknowns in this question. So for this question, we actually need to solve for two unknowns. And uh, we need to solve for the answers for x and y, which satisfy the first equation as well as the second equation. Okay, so that's the objective for solving simultaneous equations. So let's take a look at some of the success criteria before we proceed. Right. So uh, when we are solving for a pair of simultaneous equations, right, we have two unknowns in the question. And it's actually not possible to solve for two unknowns uh, without removing one of the variables first. So what we should do now is we need to actually remove one of the variables from the question uh, so that uh, the question is only in one variable and uh, we can actually apply our technique in SEC1 okay, to actually solve for the unknowns. Okay. With two variables, it's actually impossible to solve that. Okay. So now the next question will be, how do we actually remove the variable? Right? So first of all, we need to identify what variable to remove. And uh, the, the idea will be like this. We can either add or subtract the variables to uh, make one of the variables zero. Okay. As long as you can make one of the variables zero, you are actually able to remove the variable. So the choice of uh, the variable to remove right, is actually to choose the variable that has the same coefficient or in other words, the same number in front of x or y. Okay. Uh, by having that choice, right, then we'll be able to remove the variable from the question. Okay. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, the second thing that we need to decide on is uh, we need to decide whether we will add the two equations together or we will subtract the two equations in order for us to remove the variable, to make the variable zero. Okay, So uh, this is what we need to know as well. And finally, once we have removed our variable, uh, we need to also know how to solve for the equations to solve for two values, Okay, one for x and one for y. Alright, so this will be the success criteria for solving simultaneous equations using the elimination method. So let's go into the detail on how to remove the variable. Earlier we have discussed that uh, we will actually need to identify the coefficient. What is coefficient? So for example, I have 2x. Okay, so the coefficient of x is 2. Okay, it's the number in front of x. So let's say I have negative 5y. Okay, what's the coefficient of y? And the coefficient will be negative 5. So the meaning of coefficient it just means it's the number before the variable. That's the idea of coefficient. right? And uh, the idea of removing variable, right? we will actually need to identify the variable that has the same coefficient in front of them. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at this example, these two equations over here. Which variable should I remove? Okay. So if you observe, uh, does x have the same variable? Yes, right, okay, because the number in front of x is 1 for the first equation, the number in front of x is 1 also for the second equation, okay. Does y have the same coefficient? No, right, okay, because uh, the number in front of y is actually 3, the number in front of the y for the second equation is actually 1. Okay. Uh, why is it that we cannot remove 1? Because uh, we can only manipulate our equations through addition or subtraction. So if I have 3y minus y, it will give us 2y. Okay, so we are not able to remove uh, y. Uh, similarly, if we take 3y plus y, we will get 4y. Okay, so either addition or subtraction is not able to allow us to remove y. But we take for example x. Okay, for x, what, do, what can we do? Okay, it will be x minus x. We can actually obtain 0 from here. So the choice for the variable to remove here right, will be x. We want to remove x for this question. Right? Okay, let's take a look at the second example. Are the coefficients for x the same? No, right? Okay, because the coefficient for x for the first equation is 5. But the coefficient for x for the second equation is 6. They are not the same. So no matter how hard I add or no matter how hard I subtract, I will not be able to remove x from the equation. Okay, But look at our y now, right? What 
are the coefficients of y. Okay, the coefficient of y in front of it is negative four. The coefficient of y here is positive four. Okay, so despite the fact that it's positive and negative, right, we have a number four. Okay, which are the same for the variable of y. Right. So in in other words, I can actually make use of addition and subtraction to make the y zero. And in this case, I actually choose y as my variable to I want to remove. Right. So the choice of the variables to remove, right, will depend on the coefficient of our x or our y. Right. Okay. If the numbers are the same, then I can actually choose them to remove it. Okay. So that's the idea. Now next, once we have decided on the variable that we uh, will remove from the question. We need to actually uh, decide on whether we will add the equations or we will subtract the equations. Okay. So uh, before that, let's label the equations. So I will label the first equation as one. I'll write a long dash with a bracket one. Okay. This represents equation one. Okay. So please take note of the bracket. You need to put the brackets there, and this dash needs to be long enough such that it doesn't look like a minus. Right? So it will be a long dash with a bracket and 1. Okay, This will represent this equation over here is equation 1. Okay, And I'll label the second equation as equation 2. So a long dash followed by brackets and 2. Okay, So this will be equation 2. Okay, So just now we have identified that we want to remove x. Okay, Now the choice now is whether we will add the x or we will subtract the x. We can do a side working to help us to decide whether it's addition or subtraction. Okay, so I can just write down the x here. Okay, I can write down two sets of workings. Right? I can either plus or I can either minus. That's the only choices. We can only add or subtract to make it zero. Okay, so now you can actually press this in your calculator as well to verify. So 1 plus 1 will actually give us 2x. 1 minus 1 it will actually give us 0. So which one which operator plus or minus will actually give us zero. Okay, it's very obvious, right? The minus will be the one that we were choosing. So when we are doing the workings, we'll actually choose the minus operator as our choice. Okay, and we will not choose the plus because it doesn't remove our x. So using a plus will not help us to simplify the question. Okay, we need to simplify the question by making our variable zero so that we can actually remove it. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay. Now, for the second equation over here, it's the same thing, right? Okay, we have identified that we want to remove y. Okay, so first of all, we will actually label our equation as 1 and our equation as 2, right? So from the equations, I can also do the same thing. I can do the side working to decide whether or not I want to choose plus or I want to choose minus. So I can start off with a side working, negative 4y plus 4y. Okay, so same thing, I'll do another set of side working, negative 4y plus 4y. Okay. I can either choose plus or I can either choose minus. Okay. Now to check uh, whether the values are correct, right? you can actually use your calculator to calculate. So it will be negative 4 plus 4. Okay. And if you use your calculator to press negative 4 plus 4, you will get 0. Okay. For this one, you will get negative 4 minus plus 4. Okay. Or negative 4 minus 4. So if you press your calculator, you'll end up with negative 8, okay, and the y follows, right? So which one will we choose? Okay, so it's very obvious here as well, right? Uh, you will actually choose the plus. We do not choose the minus operator, okay? All right, so uh, this is actually the steps to help you to identify whether or not you choose plus or whether or not you choose minus for solving the equations or for removing the variables in the equation. Right. Okay. Now there's a faster way to actually help us to choose. Now notice the variables here. Okay. The op the signs for x is actually the same. So when the signs for x is the same or the signs for y are the same, right? We can actually choose the minus operator. Okay. Then notice over here the signs are actually different. So when the signs are different, we can actually use the plus operator. Okay. So I repeat again. When the signs are the same. We choose the minus operator. When the signs are different, we choose the plus operator. Okay. If this is confusing to you, you can always rely back on this uh, side workings. Okay, and you just do it out. Use your calculator to help you to verify, and choose the operator that will give you zero. Okay. But if you prefer the fast method, okay, the fast method is just remember when the signs are the same, you will use the minus operator. When the
when the signs are different, you use the plus operator. Right? So that's how we decide whether or not we choose plus or minus for our equations. All right, let's take a look at example now. So we will first label the two equations as equation 1 and equation 2. Okay, so decide on the variable that we want to remove. So we want to actually remove x because the coefficient of x are the same. Okay, so the next step is to decide plus or minus. So if we look at x and x, do we choose plus and minus? Minus, right? Okay, because x minus x will give us 0. So what we'll do now is we'll take equation 1 minus equation 2. Okay, and uh, how do I actually operate on this? So x minus x is 0. I need not write it down. What I'll do now is I'll take 3y from equation 1. I'll subtract negative y from equation 2. So when I present it, it will look like this. 3y minus negative y. Okay, take note I need to put the brackets for the negative y because uh, it's a minus sign. And I cannot have minus minus together. We've discussed this previously as well. Okay, so after this, we'll write the equal sign. Okay, and I'll take the 7 from equation 1. I'll minus off with the 3 from equation 2. Okay, so this will be how we uh, write out the steps. Okay, the subtraction. Okay, so I repeat again. So equation 1 minus equation 2. Why minus? Because x minus x will give us 0. Okay, so equation 1 minus equation 2. I'll take 3y from equation 1. Minus, this is my choice. Okay, I chose minus. Okay, and uh, minus of what? Minus of negative y from equation 2. Also, this is equation 1 minus equation 2. Okay, then equal. Okay, we follow the equal sign. Okay, 7 is from equation 1. Minus is my choice. And 3 is equation 2. Okay, so that's how we come up with this equation. Right? Okay, now we simplify. 3y minus negative y will become 3y plus y. Okay, so 3y plus y will be key. 4y. 7 minus 3 will give us 4. Okay, so to simplify for y, y will be equal to 4 divided by 4. You will get us a value of 1. Right? Okay, now, uh, when we are solving simultaneous equations, we need two answers. Okay, one for x, one for y. So we have already solved for y. Now we need to solve for x. Okay, so we can actually replace this y value inside equation one, or this y value inside equation two. Now, uh, regardless of which equations that I choose, I will still get the same answer. So it doesn't matter whether I choose equation one or whether I choose equation two. Both of them will give the same answer. Okay. Uh, in this case, maybe let's perhaps look at equation two because it looks simpler with a minus y only. So let's choose equation 2 now. So what I'll do now is I'll substitute y equals 1 into equation 2. Okay, so now we'll have x minus 1 is equal to 3. Okay, so what we'll need to do now is we'll just shift the negative 1 over. x will be equal to 3 plus 1, and it will give us a value of 4. Right. Do you understand how to do this question? 